going down to Mr. Grace to have myself a time. And we got this everywhere. She's going down to Mr. Grace to leave my woes behind. Ghost and cryptids everywhere. Eating something. Ah! She's going down to Mr. Grace to see if I can unwind. <laughs> Come on down to Mr. Grace and meet some friends of mine. This bloody mic always falls. Hey guys, Dan from World of Mr. Grey, Dan Dalf the Grey. So now six days after Meatloaf's death, hath Paranormal made a video. I mean, who saw that coming? Everyone! So yeah, I'm not going to go too far into it, but I said, I think it was in the Discord. Discord down below, by the way, I, I tend not to promote it as much as I should. Um, I said, a few of us said in the Discord the other day that after, on the day of Meatloaf's passing, rest in peace, Mr. Meatloaf, that Huff Paranormal would make one in three days. I was wrong. He made one in six. I've said my, I'm not going to go on an epic rant right now, i said my usual stuff about Half Paranormal. I don't like those channels. I think they, um, I think they're the succubus of the paranormal community. And they basically chase, you know, they, whoever, whichever, whichever celebrity has died on the day. Within a few days, sometimes even a few hours, they'll make a video of pretending to contact them. Now I've always said... I've always said, I'm not, I'm not going to go too long on this subject because I'll get too annoyed. I'm going to read, go through your comments actually. But I've always said, when it comes to spirit communication, if people want to do that to sort of like find some peace, you know, for loved ones in private, whatever, I'm all for it. I'm not going to go against that. If it helps someone in the grieving process, I'm fine. When it comes to this celebrity stuff, they're clearly doing it just to, to get the views. Now... Before you say, I know every YouTube video wants to get views. I make videos. I want people to watch it. Simple as. But with this, they know that the algorithm, the Google algorithm, will have the word meatloaf um, trending high, obviously, for obvious reasons, on the day he died. And in the next like couple of days, next couple of weeks, probably, they'll make a video. Now, for example, they, they, um, they've made plenty of videos I'm not just talking about Huff, his whole paranormal, Cody ITC, Craig McMahon does it. <laughs> Although I'm not even, I'm not, I'm actually not, genuinely not sure if Craig McMahon is a parody. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. But, um, but they will make, they will have their reverb amps. Basically a guitar amplifier. They'll probably find like an interview of the celebrity which has just passed away. Put it into a mixer with some reverb echo, reverse it sometimes, like Craig McMahon's for example, um, I haven't got it now, but I did a video a good few, over a year ago almost, where if I reverse his, his, his communications, it's a narrator from reading from a book. I know I, I tried to find exactly which book this was, I don't know if it's like a religious text book or something, I'm not sure, but there's just a dude narrating a book. But then he just reverses it, puts some reverb on it, so it sounds unearthly. I made a video, um, oh, again, it's almost a year ago, about Cody ITC and Huff Paranormal, who used to be mates, right? Huff Paranormal was one of the original, um, I say creators, didn't really create anything, he just made an amplifier. But he was one of the original people to do this. And before I get further, by the way, I know I get some people come back at me, especially fans of Huff and Hope, and that's that's fine. You're allowed to have your say on it. They'll come back and say I'm I'm just a hater. I'm not really not a hater. <laughs> I'm just pointing stuff out. But I do I do have um, a problem with these kind of uh, channels. I'm not going to show you them because they likely to bloody strike me because I say stuff. But I do have a problem with those channels because they state 100% real. What we do is 100% real. Hope Paranormal apparently, apparently, has some scientific proof that his is real. I don't know. Still waiting on the verdict on that one. Clearly just put in the voice of an interview of the dead celebrity, reversing it, putting all kinds of effects on it so it sounds otherworldly. And what they do, they'll ask something and then they'll turn a knob to turn the volume up on the um, the speaker so something comes out. And then, then they will they will try and put text on the screen. Of the, this is what it says when it doesn't. Like I said, I'm not hating on them. I just think they are egregious, um, extremely disrespectful to the families of those people who have just passed on. That's what I think, because I can guarantee you the family members of Meatloaf or anyone, like I did, they, they made a video on Robin Williams. 
I'm going off the top of my head. I don't want to go to the channel and get angry. Robin Williams. They don't run on Bob Saget. They do, they do it. They do it mainly rappers for some reason. Whenever someone passes away within days, they'll make a video. I contact. He has seen the light. Love is the key. Goff. Get out here with that shit. Ugh, it's, it's the most pretentious bullshit I have ever seen. One, and I've said this before, one, why the hell would Meatloaf want to talk to you? Huff. <laughs> and anyone else who thinks they can contact them, why would they want to talk to you? If they wanted to communicate with you know, anyone, I'm sure it'd be their family members. Not you, some YouTuber. <laughs> it does my head in, it does my bloody head in. But anyway, I'm not going to get any further than that. Because <laughs> I won't stop, I'm supposed to be doing the comments video. But anyway, I've been ill. And you know, maybe it's karma coming to catch up with me because of all the uh, bullshit I point out. I don't believe in karma. I mean, if karma was real, I'm owed some. Trust me, I'm owed some bloody car good karma. <laughs> it's... <laughs> I'm not going to get into it. But yeah, I've been ill. My voice is pretty much almost back. It's still a little crack now and then. So I thought I'd catch up with the comments because I've missed about two weeks of comments. I don't know how long this video is going to be. So yeah, I'm just going to get on with it. I'm just going to go with the top. Heart as many as I can. Answer as much as I can. Good or bad, don't matter. By the way, um, I'm not going to answer any of the ones of the... The post I put up this morning because I agree with every single one of you. Anyway, so oh, I will answer this one. Andrew the Jamunker, and they commented on the TikTok originality video. Hey, Mr. Gray, you always say TikTok is all fake, but I have never seen a video or heard any anything from you on why. Do you think you could explain why all TikTok videos are faked? I've used the app and never seen a feature to add shadow dudes in the video. Really would appreciate it. Love the videos. Well, I appreciate you. Uh, appreciate the comment, Andrew. Um. It's not that I say all TikTok is fake. The panel of videos I've seen of TikTok, they're bullshit. <laughs> it's, uh, but it doesn't have to be an app. It doesn't have to be a TikTok app. There are a number of TikTok apps out there which can create ghostly things. But a lot of it, you can just do it yourself. You can just record the video, upload it to TikTok. You can record it. I could record this. I'm not going to. I can record this, upload I know, however much it is. Three minutes now on TikTok? I don't know. But no, it's not that I say all videos of, from TikTok are fake. It's basically... But all videos from TikTok, not all, but like, like I said, night, night, there are some videos on TikTok I actually like. Mostly involving dogs, and funny dog videos and cute dogs, that's pretty much. And the occasional, I don't know, I, like like certain trends. When I see this the first time, I thought, hmm, that's funny. But then as TikTok does, it will take that trend. Every single person on the platform will do the exact same trend. And I'm not saying they'll add something new to the trend. So say, for example, this is the dancing one. This is the trend, ready? That's the trend, right? Now, I, that's not the trend. That's just me doing stupid shit. But now, say, for example, I started that trend, right? That was the first time you ever saw this video. Saying, hmm, he's dancing. But then, I don't know how many users are on TikTok. So let's just say a million, right? A million people on TikTok will see that trend and say, I want to do the same thing. Instead of adding to it, they'll, they will literally make their video with them, the same music, and they'll be... They'll change nothing. That's my uh, thing with TikTok. I'm not saying, that's not my only thing. They also put a lot of dangerous content out in TikTok, if you ask me. I think so, anyway. Like, there's a lot of trends, like, what was it? The Tide Pod thing? Eating the Tide Pod Challenge? How, how dumb do you have to be? <laughs> it's the stupidest shit. But a thousand bloody TikTokers tried it. Eating Tide Pods. For those who don't know what Tide Pods is, the, it's the things you put in your washing machine to wash your clothes and dissolves. Highly toxic to you, by the way. Don't ever do that. <laughs> but that's the kind of stuff TikTok does, and that's why I don't like TikTok. And like I said, again, I, I need to reiterate this. I'm not putting every single TikToker in that category of dumb people. But there are a lot of dumb people on uh, TikTok. And it's just the dangerous trends I don't like. It's the cringe. It, you look on any, um, like YouTube has cringe. I've done some cringy stuff, I know that. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, whatever social platform you're on, it all has its cringe. But for, for whatever reason, I don't know why, TikTok seems to be the height of cringe. I don't know. 200% bullshit. I know that's really not much to do with the paranormal. <laughs> but I, don't, I just, I mean, I don't hate the people on TikTok. I just think they have zero originality. Like, again, not all of them, 99% of them, that's all. But as far as paranormal stuff, um, there are apps on there to make fake stuff. What was that app? 
Or was it it's fine like the shape or the heat of something in a chair or some shit? I can't remember. But my point is, you can make a video on anything, put your own effects in it, and then upload it to TikTok. Like I said, I don't think all TikTok videos are fake. The ones I've seen are obviously bollocks. But the reason when I, if, if I see like, say, for example, a shadow dude video on TikTok, you can pretty much guarantee I've seen the exact same effect or the exact same positioning of the camera on someone else's TikTok doing the exact same stuff with just them instead of the other guy. That's the why, uh, that's the thing with TikTok. But I do appreciate that question, uh, Andrew, and thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reply to you. This is a comment from Maureen, which I saw this morning in work. I did read it, but I'm hoping she's okay with me reading this out. But um, I saw this and it's, it's spot on of why I don't like those Huff Paranormal channels or, you know, spirit communication channels. This is why I don't like them. I'm gonna read it out, Maureen, I hope you don't mind. Right, so Maureen says, Unfortunately, there are people in this world with no respect or value towards other people's lives. I think I had mentioned months ago that I'd never heard of these creators, and even if I've had heard of them previous to your videos, I still wouldn't have watched due to the pure disrespect and all in the name of views for YouTube. I said once before, though, though my late husband wasn't the celebrity, I personally know how I would feel if he had been, and within days someone had made a video about contacting him after his death. Death, sorry. And again, me personally, I have many interests when it comes to the paranormal, Wicca, Pagan, etc. Even with being a Christian, but I would not want to try to contact my late husband. Doesn't mean I haven't wanted to, to hear his voice again, but he is gone and hopefully in heaven. Plus, I believe that trying to contact him would only have worsened the grieving process and would have prevented me from moving on. March 3rd will be the th three year anniversary of his passing, which also happened to be our wedding anniversary and not a day goes by that I don't miss him. But I want him to rest in peace and I want to remember him as he was before he got sick and before the day I found him when he passed. Celebrities are no different. They are people and their families are people. They provided entertainment when they were living. Their deaths should not, shouldn't be a form of entertainment still. Love you Dan and hope you are continue to feel better. Well Maureen thank you for that uh, comment. I, I read it this morning when I was in work and I wanted to sh you know, show this on the video because I think you're spot on. I think you spot on one, you know, very sorry to hear about your uh, husband, uh, you have said before. Yeah, that's that's exactly why I don't like those spirit cha uh, communication channels. They, you know, p there's people still out there, especially obviously the celebrities, there's people seeing, they see all, they see the, the passing of their family members or loved ones in the media as it is, you know, it's plastered all over media. But then when you get some shit-stained cha channels pretending, and they are pretending, I don't care what they say at the beginning of the videos, 100% real, they're not. Try and prove me wrong, please. Um, but that's why I don't like them. That's why I don't like them. They are, I think they're the, the, the bottom of the barrel when it comes to paranormal anything. That's what I think. Right, I'm moving on from Huff now, because I will get angry, hopefully. But uh, thank you, Maureen, for the uh, comments. Emil Trika and a lot of you said this on my previous video, the TikTok originality video with the woman with the big nails. And I said it's probably her boyfriend or her flatmate or mate or whatever in the background doing whatever, making food, making a coffee, whatever. And a lot of you said, Emil Trika, Trika, I do apologize if I said you said wrong. First video, it was her boyfriend. I remember watching somewhere and she actually said to her view viewers that this was her boyfriend. For the rest of the videos, I'm not going to even bother. And a lot of you said the exact same thing. And it just goes to show that a lot of like top five, I'm not slating on top five channels. I like top five channels, but sometimes they don't do their research. They do not do their research. And that video apparently is like almost two years old now. And yet people are still putting it up on the channel. Look, ghost shadow dude in the background. When the person who made the video, the tick, I think she's a TikToker, who made the video originally put it up said no it's my boyfriend <laughs> yet somehow they still get bloody recycled into the top five paranormal videos happens a lot you see a lot of these clips they'll get recycled you know of this shadow dude or creepy face in the background when the, the original uploaders themselves have come out well actually no it's not it's this it was is me dad is me boyfriend and my girlfriend but yes a lot of you pointed that out no thank you all right, Apollo Creed, and this is another one I saw in work, and I, I wanted to add it, so uh, here we go. Hey Dan, welcome back, thank you. Loving the videos as always, I have a couple of questions about ghosts and ghost videos in general, and I hope I can word them well and not come across as a dick. Don't worry, you won't. Firstly, you will often say that the video can be faked, and you will show how the fakery is possible, but 
But does something just be impossible make it so? No, I know what you mean. And I do get that. You know, if, if I can recreate something in a video to make it look like a specific ghost video, it doesn't mean that's how they did it. But the difference is, the reason I can... The reason when I show you how to make a shadow dude, whatever, I can see that this is exactly what they have done. That's why I do that. Like, uh, Corridor Digital, by the way, who I'm, I'm massive fans. I've been fans for them for years, since the original Superman video. If you don't know what it is, go, up, go look up uh, Superman with a GoPro. One of the best videos you'll ever see. But uh, Corridor Digital did um, one of their first debunking videos a few months back. They've done a few since, and I really enjoy them. But they did their first one a few months back. I think it was UFOs. They watched a load of UFOs videos and they and they were saying, oh, see, I, I could recreate this so easily and this is how I would do it. And then they got a lot of shit in the comments from people saying, just because you could do, recreate it doesn't mean it's not real. And I do agree with that statement, I suppose. You now, just because it can be recreated doesn't mean it's fake. But at the same time, they're only saying that because they can probably see... Like myself, when you look at like um, when you look at a video and you can see the masks, you can see the special effects which have been inserted. When you when you know what you're looking for and you can see the little details, that's why we say right. That's a mask. That's just a a a, a dark shadow drawn with a paintbrush in in Photoshop, saved as a PNG, so the background is uh, opaque or opacity is dialed down, I should say, and then they've you know animated it. That's why we say that. But uh, I'm going to go on with the comment now because I've lost myself. Uh, where was I? I mean, you could fake a video of an elephant, but does that mean all elephant videos should be viewed with skepticism? I love elephants. I hope not. <laughs> I realize that elephants are proven to exist and ghosts are not yet. I just wonder if something being possible to fake sh should make it seen as automatically fake. Um, no, like I said, it, it shouldn't. But the reason, like, if I say I can do this this way, it's because I've seen exactly how they do it themselves. Secondly, how do you explain ghost stories and lore in cultures all over the world? So many countries and cultures have ghosts or some variation of paranormal entities. How would you personally explain a wide, worldwide ghost culture when stories of ghosts have been around for so long, way before information and stories were easily spread from country to country? Sorry for the essay. Please don't think I'm trying to dig you just very curious. No, 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 Paula, I really enjoyed that uh, comment. Um, one thing I always say, I'm not debunking the paranormal, I'm just debunking videos that reportedly show paranormal. That's, that's what I always try to state. I can't speculate about stuff. Like, the stories of ghosts throughout the ages, I think. I think there's stories from the, you know, the Roman times about ghosts. I think. I can't remember. <laughs> but, but yeah, no, there's stories around. You know, there's always stories of things we can't explain, 100%. And when it comes to people's personal stories, I always say, I don't know, I'm not there. I don't know if they genuinely saw something or they think they saw something or they were making it up or imagine it i can never say because i'm not there when it comes to personal stories there have been a lot of stories throughout the ages i mean in fact i might make a separate video about this because it is an interesting one but there have been a lot of stories throughout the ages where a story i don't know say a haunting of the old inn i'm just saying a general inn now the haunting of the old inn and the white lady is known to come down the stairs at night pour herself a beer Drink it, the water can't fall through her thing because she's a ghost, obviously. And then that's, that story will go around for like 50, 60 years. It could have been started by someone. Could have been a joke. Someone could have been trying to scare the punters at the pub. Or could have genuinely thought they'd seen something. But they might have seen something at the corner of their eye. But then over that 50 years, that story will get embellished. It'll get embellished and think, people, whenever they tell the story, will start adding things like... The first story will be, there was a, I saw something at the corner of my eye in the, in the end of the bar right there one night when I was leaving. And then a year or two later, someone will tell the same story. Yeah, um, John said he saw something at the corner of the eye and then he went across the room right in front of him. And then about five or ten years, again, someone will say, still tell the same story. Yeah, this guy John, who was, used to be a punter in this pub about 20 years ago, he said he saw a ghost come downstairs and go right in front of him and pour a beer. It goes like that. I'm not saying that's exactly what happens, but that, when a story is told from like 100 years ago, 500 years ago, 1,000 years ago, even 10 years ago, I'm not saying they made up, but what I'm saying is it's, unless it's documented, somehow, I don't know, 
I mean, writing something down, I'm sure that is a form of documentation, but at the same time, it's being written by the person who's experienced it. So their experience might be different to other people's experience. What I mean is, <laughs> I'm just going on on one now, nicely. today. Um, stories can be embellished throughout years, but again, like I said, this is pure speculation by myself. Again, I'm not there. I don't know. But I like that question. I might... I am going to look into, like, various histories of ghosts through, you know, from the Roman times. Um, I'm fairly sure some... Ro there's, like, Shakespearean um, uh, stories about... Go no, I'm, not, I'm not talking about Hamlet and all that, but... <laughs> you know what I mean. Stories throughout the ages of when they... When ghosts were reported. I love that stuff anyway. So I might make a separate video of that. But thank you for the comments. Look Fish Lamp. They commented on the... Which one was it? Ghost Hunters Tap video I made. And I've said this a few times. And you know. I, I always say it again. Why do ghost hunters get so freaked out when they encounter ghosts? Isn't that their job? I agree. This is one of my biggest things about paranormal investigators. Now. I went on a paranormal investigation a few months ago. With um, a team... To the Skirred Inn. Now, I went there. I was I was going on about four hours sleep. And I was up for 16 hours, even before the investigation started. It was it was me trying to get used to... It was trying to fool my body into sleeping different times after work. Because I couldn't get my body in, ready in time. So I was really tired throughout the investigation anyway. But we stayed there till 8 o'clock in the morning. I dropped at about half three in the after... Um, at about half three in the morning... And I had to get a couple of hours of sleep. I just had to. I was, there was just no function. I was starting to dribble and everything. <laughs> I was really tired. But the entire time I was there, I did see sort of like, how can I explain? I weren't scared. I weren't, I didn't have any fear. I had a genuine curiosity of like, what if, what if something actually showed itself to me or jumped out to me or whatever? What would I, how would I react to that? And I don't know, I don't know. I'd like to say, I'd like to think I'd have a rational brain. I think, right? What the hell? Am I going nuts here? But I used to go exploring on my own, abandoned to abandoned buildings on my own, always on my own. And I went into some dark, bloody, creepy places. And I tell you what, the tension was up. The tension was up. But at the same time, my my rational brain got me through it. And I was like, oh shit, right? I just need to go around this dark tunnel now, and I can get out here. But again, if something had jumped out to me, then would I scream? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but I'd like to think I'd react in a certain way, which wouldn't be running away. I can tell you that much. But I do often wonder. Well, I say I say I wonder. I know why they do it. But I, but when it, you know, paranormal investigators, they, the biggest bugbear with paranormal invest, investigators, not all of them. You know, there are a lot of uh, genuine ones who are actually genuinely trying to look for stuff. But um, a lot of them are sensationalizing. You know that's why they run and run away scared. So you know, you stay tuned and like, oh my god, what's going to happen next? Are they going to survive? Yes, they did because they edited the video and uploaded it to YouTube. But um, <laughs> I'm going to write sock, you know. The other thing as well, I think if you're going to get scared at everything, I think you're in the wrong line of work when you become a paranormal investigator. I think so anyway. I think if you ju um, jump and run away... Now, I, for those who watch my gaming stuff, yes, I jump. But it's because it's horror jump scares in your face. It's completely different. I know what to expect. But when you go to an investigation, paranormal investigation, or a haunted place, uh, your expectations are dependent on your beliefs. So, I don't know. I do think it's... I do find it weird that some paranormal investigators, when they go somewhere, they scream and shout and jump and run away. And then they cut the video just as shit this started happening. Now, it could either be because they don't want to show the guy around the corner doing all the stuff. Or they're genuinely too scared to carry on filming. But in that case, why are you there? Why are you there? I could go on, but I'm not going to. <laughs> but I totally agree with your comment, uh, Look Fish Lamp. Uh, it's weird. I don't know. I don't know. It's like becoming an astronaut and not wanting to go in space. Or it's like becoming an astronaut. I'm like, no, I'm not flying up to space. No way. I trained to be an astronaut, but there's no way I'm flying up to space. That's the way I look at it. It's, it's, it's weird. But anyway, moving on. 
Fatal Roadie says, again about the TikTok originality video, I love how people on TikTok who have their face off center of the camera so the ghost or whatever it's, it is in the back can be seen clearly. Whenever I see videos start like that, it's a red flag. I agree. <laughs> like when TikTok first started, I used to think that when they're filming like that, hey guys, it's Dan from World of Mr. Grey. And you know, I, I, I'm doing my best. They're holding their phone. This is what, another reason why I don't like TikTok. <laughs> They do everything in portrait mode. And anything who films anything should should know, never film in portrait mode. Always do it in landscape. It's better. But they're holding their phone, and I don't know if they can't see themselves or not. But I used to th just think they were bad video makers. <laughs> but no, yeah, it's clearly they're doing that. So they, so whatever happens in the background, you know, you can see it, and then they can get the comments. Look, something happened in the background. I saw it above your head. It's weird. Right, I'm, I'm not going to bash TikTok anymore. <laughs> I, liked, I, like, I like funny dog videos on TikTok. So. Swoop the mod man. I was going to answer him back, but I'm going to give him time to edit his comment. But he says, try again. Find some better constant to make. Moving on. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm all for a Saki remark and a Saki witty reply. Need to check your grammar first, though. Not just the grammar, but check you're putting the correct word in. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, swoop, the mod man. <laughs> right, still hearty bloody comment, you little bugger. <laughs> yeah, this this made me laugh as well. In the TikTok uh, video, there's, there's a bunch of girls trying to summon a demon who, with this doll called Catalina or something. And I didn't know what they were saying, but a lot of you translated it. And Potterero says, the girls with the doll were saying, after saying Catalina, in the name of the demon, manifest yourself here today. Of course it's bollocks, but the thing is, if it was real, they're summoning a demon, so the demon replies, they're going to run, so what is the point? Exactly, what did they expect? If they, if they, if they were trying to summon the demon, and that's exactly what happened, what did they expect? It's funny. Uh, this comment is from Iriel. I think it's Iriel or Iriel. I do apologize if I'm saying it wrong. Hello, Momi? Mom? I don't know. It's Fernando. Oh, I lit. right. Sorry. <laughs> you Brazil. Okay. Right. Sorry. I do apologize. This is Fernando, I'm assuming he's saying. I live in Brazil and I have a channel very similar to yours. I watched the video by Craig McMahon. I'm a, a man. I laughed. I'm a card assist spirit. I don't know what that means. And my mission in Brazil is to deny Charles the pass for Charles the hunt ghosts. Okay, I think he means he's a debunker. I've even taken strike. Oof, not good. So I show the montages, video cuts, line threads, is that what it says? That they use to pull things in short. In short, I use my knowledge in the supernatural world to deny these fakers who deceive people. Spiritual spirituality exists, but it is subtle and most of the time imperceptible. But in Brazil, there are even ghosts riding a bicycle. <laughs> And people believe. I really need to talk to you. I'd love to react on on this video and show it here in Brazil. Not everyone speaks English here, including me. So if you allow me, I would really like to make a react and show your channel. Um, I real. If you ever see this, feel free to show my video. You are you have full permission to show my video. I am a full believer in um, fair use. <laughs> I'm full believer in that. But you don't have to ask. Feel free to use my video. And in fact, for the people who can, uh, what's Brazil? Portuguese. Is it Portuguese? Go to this channel, look. I real. I will try and watch your videos if you got subtitles. Oh, there you go. It does have English subtitles, so I'm going to watch your videos. Oh, it's actually on Craig McMahon, look. <laughs> oh, it's Unreal. It's Unreal in Portuguese, right? I got. Okay. So there you go. Unreal's, uh, or I real um, channel. If you want to go check it out, it's a Brazilian debunker. Go check them out. And thank you for the comment if you see this. Right, this is, this is, a few people have said this, so I'm going to possibly look this up now, but from the very least person, uh, the idea that Ouija, is it Ouija or Ouija? I was saying, I was saying Ouija, and I know Ya is German for yes, Ya? Yeah. And then we is French for yes. Uh, but apparently that's a misconception, but I am, I am going to have to look this up. Uh, the idea that we are, Ouija, comes from the French and German words for yes is a misconception. The name is taken from a word spelled out on the board when its inventor asked a supposed ghost to name it. The pronunciation is we ya or we ya. We ja or we ja or we ja. Okay. Um I'm gonna look that up right now. I, I need to I need to look this up. Um where did the name 
Ouija. Oop, I spelled Ouija wrong. Ouija come from? Because again, this could be a tall tale. Oh, see, I've already found something about it. Look, this is interesting. Ouija board history. Uh, Ouija board history, where did they come from? There are many theories and conjectures on Ouija board history and how it began. An old name for Ouija board is talking boards. The Ouija board may have originated from the fabled Moroccan city Ouija, also spelled... Hang on. I thought, if, I thought it was a game. I thought it was a board game. <laughs> the planchette held in both hands and on the board was named after the French medium M. Planchette. Adolphus Theodore Wagner uh, received the first patent for the board in London, in England in 1854. It was then called a psychograph and was supposed to read the minds of people with nervous energy. The Ouija board was first introduced in the, 19, in the United States in 1890 as a parlor game sold in novelty shops. E.C. E. Reicher, is it Reicher? I think it is. Elijah Bond and Charles Kennard created a new design. They spread the letters of alphanumeric and twin arcs across the middle of the board. Below the letters were the numbers 1 to 10. In the corners were yes and no. Kennard called the new board Ouija, supposedly after the Egyptian word for good luck. However, Ouija is not the Egyptian word for good luck since the board repeatedly told Kennard, Kennard that Ouija was the Egyptian word. Wait, the board told him that? Kennard, who lost the company, was taken over by his former foreman, William Fould. In 1892, he reinvented the history of Ouija boards. He claimed he invented the Ouija board and the name Ouija was a fusion of the French word we oui for yes and German for ya yeah, for yes. So there you go. And it's, the story is a bit mixed on that one. I must admit the story is, <laughs> the story is a bit mixed. I mean, I suppose that's the urban legend stuff. No one knew where that name comes from. But it is interesting. I like that. I do like that. I'm going so long in this video and I've barely answered a few questions, but they've been big questions and big explanations. So yeah, may, this may have to be a part two. Uh, Stop Propaganda says, nice bollocks video. And I do have a question. Dandolf, I've noticed that some of these top 10 channels are playing old stuff, but flipping the view by 180 degrees. Is this transformative enough to not get a strike on YouTube? Or is there some other explanation? They are literally trying to hide from the YouTube algorithm. <laughs> I mean, in my opinion, those clips should come under fair use anyway, but there are a lot of people out there who don't like it. They don't like it, and I personally think they abuse the copyright system. But some people try to get around it by flipping the video 180 degrees, or even turning the, the opacity of the video down, or darkening the video, or lightening the video. They do a lot of things to try and get away from the YouTube algorithm. But at the end of the day, the algorithm always finds you. So it's not worth it. It's not worth it. If you think the, the clip... Or video shouldn't be up there, don't do it. That's my opinion. Because <laughs> YouTube will slap that shit. Lindsay says, <laughs> I learned, and I know Jenny J is asking as well. I learned a new term, keyframing. Thanks, I'll be honest. I was hoping to hear voice, voice crack, but I didn't hear it. That means you're on the mend. I guess my healing vibes reach you. Thank you for the healing vibes, uh, Lindsay. Yes, keyframing. I'm not going to explain that now. I am going to make a separate video about that. It's just, it's basically the same as putting a mask in, but this time you animate it. Pretty much. Science! <laughs> I did see a comment there, uh, Jenny, by the way. <laughs> right, this one's going to be my final comment because it's going really long now. But Jenny J says, Listening to you talking was quite entertaining. I do have a question. In previous videos, you mentioned something called artifacting. What is that? How would I be able to spot that in the future? Thanks. Um, artifacting? How can I explain it? It's hard to explain unless you see it. Artifacting of a video is when the compression of the video or the bitrate of the video is so low that you'll start seeing blocks. You see a lot in like low lit um, video. You'll see it in video which has been downloaded from YouTube, then re-uploaded, then downloaded and re-uploaded, processed that because every time you upload a video to YouTube, it processes it, it compresses the video. When you have, say for example, and you have a 4K video, right? You upload it to YouTube, um, and then someone using OBS or whatever captures that video from YouTube on to a 1080 file, 1080p file, right? So that video now is 4K video, but compressed to 1080, basically. Essentially, not quite like that, but you know what I mean. So then someone uploads that same video up to YouTube again as 1080. But then again, someone records it using OBS down to say 480p, and then they will process that, re-upload that to YouTube. It's still the 4K video originally, 
but that's been compressed to 480p. Every time you download and re-upload it, it compresses and compresses and compresses. And that's when you start getting artifacting in videos with blocky little things around the edges. Say if this was a, if this was like a low um, resolution video, you see blockiness around my big bold bonts. See blockiness around my arms, around the, you see blockiness in the back, little animal probably wouldn't be able to make him out actually. That's artifacting. And when someone adds, when someone has a video, low quality video, which a lot of these um, ghost videos, for example, are, are um, deliberately low quality because it's hard to see the little guy running in the background pretending to be a ghost. But then what that does create is art, a lot of artifacting. And also when you put like a special effect, like if you put a shadow dude into a low quality video, you'd have a lot of artifacting around that shadow dude and that would sort of like point at the uh, at the shadow dude being a special effect because you'd be able to see it a lot more that other than if they just smoothed the video out or did it as a high quality and just made it better. It's hard to explain with artifacting. You can get artifacting in video games. You can get artifacting in low lit, uh, low lit video. You can get artifacting in video which has been uploaded a bazillion times. There's a lot of videos out there explaining it better than I can. And who know a hell of a lot more than I do. But that's essentially what artifacting is. When you see little blockiness in videos, that's artifacting. That's all I can really say. <laughs> but thank you for the comment, Jenny, and thank you for trying to rack my brain there. But uh, anyway, once again, that was long. It didn't seem like I answered much, but I answered big questions, I think. So that's why it's so long. Bloody hell. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll be back again soon, sometime in the next couple of days. I'm hoping to do another live stream this weekend. I will try and give a lot more, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A lot more, oh my god, my brain is melting. A lot more time? It was another word I was looking for, I can't remember. But anyway, uh, leave a like if you like this video, leave a sub if you're new to my channel, I do these quite often. And that's it, I hope you enjoyed. Me and Rich are hopefully having another video out soon, so keep an eye out for that. For those who like the video gaming stuff. But uh, but yeah, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye for now.